everybody, this is John Weller with Floor Force. Today I'm with Michael Raskin, CEO and founder of Raskin Industries. Michael, great seeing you in these strange times as we are quarantined. I know that you're in Florida, which is great to know. You're right across the state from me. Literally, if I drove directly from my house across the state, I would run into basically where you are. So that's kind of cool. Um, but listen, for those of these, for those people that don't know who you are, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Well, I've, um, I guess you can consider myself a, a lifer in the flooring industry. Um, grew up in it. My, uh, my grandfather actually, uh, opened up a, a store in Harlem in the early 1900s. So actually the Raskin name in flooring is, uh, over a hundred years old. Uh, my dad sold the retail and got into distribution and then started going overseas in the, in the 60s, uh, developing products, actually was the first to develop resilient flooring um, that was imported. It was originally from Germany back in the 60s um, and, then, uh, and then got into, uh, it kind of transformed into LVT in the 80s. And um, uh, so... I worked for my father. I've worked for uh, Shaw Industries in the beginning. I consider that my uh, MBA, you know, saved some money and made some money <laughs> and uh, learned a lot there. Grateful for that. And, um, you know, I was able to use a lot of that experience into in developing, you know, the LVT market with, uh, with, uh, with my dad. So um, I've been going to, uh, uh, Asia since the early nineties and, uh, really saw it transform, you know, from, from, uh, self stick to glue down to, um, to a floating product. And now you've got, obviously got the click in different, in different formats. So pretty kind of see, seen it from the beginning until, until we are now where we yeah. are now. I mean, and I can, I can relate to that big time. My father, I grew up in the flooring industry also, basically my father was the head of R&D at a carpet mill and then became the vice president. I was in that mill all the time, seeing how they produce products. Um, it was pretty incredible. There was a time when I remember they had so many samples, they would make these little, they would actually tough carpet into these little swatches and look at it. Right. There right. were so many in his office, I could climb up about a 10 foot pile of samples that were just there they kind of, it was kind of a thing where they just threw the samples there as they were done with them. And it used right. to be tall enough to climb it as a kid. So yeah. I never forget that. Yeah. Um, so listen, dude, your brand, your background, your background here is your brand, which is really cool. Um, and you kind of made reference to Harlem. Um, but I know you're also kind of a, you're in Florida now, you're in Miami mm -hmm. and you've got these South Beach colors and what I'm looking at in your background What's the, tell me the story behind the gorilla, the influence. And I know you, I see those South beach colors, but you also have the New York theme going. Like, what is your right. inspiration? What, what is really that brand all about? Well, you know, um, you know, learning from my dad and, you know, innovation and also the way I live kind of my life. Um, I travel a lot, uh, for business and, and when I can for pleasure and, um, I always find inspiration from my travels and, um, and my, you know, favorite city. I grew up in, in New York. So, um, I still keep a place there in Williamsburg, New York. So actually the background is from a, a wall in, uh, in Williamsburg, New York. So, um, I get a lot of inspiration from, uh, Brooklyn because there's a lot of young creative designers and also, um, you know, a lot of hip, boutiques and um, cool restaurants with great decor. So I just find it extremely stimulating for me. And I kind of, you know, store it in my, my mind or I take a photo and kind of keep it in there. So when I'm developing products, uh, um, I could tap into that. So I really tap into, you know, my travels and, and, and where I live and also Miami, Wynwood, you got the Wynwood walls where, you know, you've got the same idea with the painting on the walls but you know Miami is a is a design mecca as well you know you've got um you've got uh, international uh art, art shows like Art Basel here so um you know just being around it I think it's important especially you know in flooring you know you talk about 
Um, people talk about fashion and design, but you know, I, I, I really live it. It's who I am. And I try to have that, uh, personality in my products that I, you know, so I could bring it to the brand. Yeah. And I, and you know what, your products speak for themselves. And I will say another thing about your brand, your brand really, really shows that you pass the brand test. And the funniest thing about your brand I can bring up Raskin, the name Raskin, and I do this in the office. So our people, a lot of our people are tech people. They're not flooring people. So when we're mm -hmm. talking about products or talking about projects, if I ever bring yours up, I say, hey, the Raskin project. I'm like, the gorilla. And they're like, oh, the gorilla. <laughs> Every right. single person knows. So I, I was just going to do this for you. Yeah. Like, Thank this, you. Yeah, let me tell you, you're, you're, you really I got my white the, one on. <laughs> you really passed the test. I mean, it's really funny because everyone in our office who are not flooring people know the gorilla. Yeah. Um, so I love that. So listen, you know, I, again, you get, you win a lot of awards. I know this year you won another award for innovation. Um, yeah. And I think that's really what that really, listen, it's one thing to talk to talk. It's like you said, it's another thing to actually bring it and you actually bring it. Um, let me ask you a question. So in digital marketing, what we do for a living, we use mm -hmm. data, right? Everything that we do is based on data. We bring in data, we run A-B tests, we have beta tests out in the market. When we're trying a new product for us, we're running those tests. And, and once we gather enough data, we then launch a product. Um, mm -hmm. What is your process to optimize around how you decide on the products to actually bring to market and actually launch out there? And is there a way of you testing the market or is it just you putting together all the thoughts? Like, what is your process? Well, you know, I, I, I have a, um, a close uh, um, amount of people behind me that um, I work with clo closely as far as uh, when it comes to design and developing products. So, you know, it's kind of a combination. It's kind of all the ingredients that kind of make up the cake. It's, it's, it's not a, um, I don't think it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's not a data driven process. It's more of a, um, it's an artistic process and um, it comes from experience. It's knowing, you know, we work with different factories, whether it's in uh, China, Korea, or USA, you know, first you got to understand, you know, what, what their strengths are, you know, as far as product and, 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 you know, the market is so diverse now, there's so many subcategories within LVT. So, um, you know, understanding, you know, which, which factories are, are better suited to make products and, and, and how you can capitalize on those opportunities. And then the design process, you know, it's, um, like I said, I kind of, you know, when I work with designers, I kind of, see our product line and I'm kind of more of a curator. So I curate the product line and then I work with professionals on, on the graphic design and colorist side to kind of tweak the colors. And I kind of, again, curate the colors to kind of get them right. You know, cause understanding the, the manufacturing process and you know, what products kind of sell through my experience. Um, you can, you can tap into that to, to develop the line and then the, the last piece, which I think is really important, we actually work with our customers. You know, we, we get their input. So my, 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 my job is to say, okay, literally there's 10,000 options, let's say. I bring it down to, let's say, 25 options. And I say, now I want your input. Let's get it down to five. So I know the 25 are pretty, pretty solid and I'm comfortable with. So just to get it down to those last uh, few, I, I really want to get my, my customers and, and their customers input, whether it's on the design side or, or the residential side. That's great. Great. That's, that's great to know how you do that. So this leads me into, I think, the most exciting part of this conversation. So mm -hmm. 3D printing has been yes. a very hot topic in the world. Like, every industry right now is being completely turned upside down with 3d printing technology and i noticed when i was walking around surfaces and demo techs these 3d printing companies were there one of them mm. happened to be next to our booth at demo techs and it was interesting because they were next door to us there weren't any many 
people talking to them. I don't think people really understood. However, I spent the last day at Domotex. There wasn't a lot of people there. COVID-19 actually had ticked in at that moment. And mm. it was very sparse, the attendance. So I got in a conversation with this guy who, who had that machinery. And when he explained mm -hmm. it to me, my head exploded. I literally was like, you're kidding me. So literally it's print on demand. Like you dream it, you print it, it's a product. And it's actually on the, the product itself, which is just game changing to, in, in my mind. I don't, listen, you're, you're the manufacturer. I only know what I got from yeah. that 30 minute conversation. Um, but I would love to hear um, your take on what you're going to do with it, what it means to the industry, and also like that aha moment when you saw this, this 3D printing technology and when it clicked for you, like what, did, what, what went through your mind? Because for me, it was like, wait a minute, you mean all those machines and all that stuff? is completely can go away and he's like this is it right here so i would love to hear your kind of your how dude my dog's over here oh you gotta roll with it that's the... <laughs> all right all right that's I'll the start world back. we live in that's all right <laughs> um so i'd love to hear your mm. discovery of 3d printing and how it could apply right. to raskin industries your aha moment. And then now I'd love to hear like what you're going to do as you roll this out. Yeah. Well, you know, for, for me, like, you know, I do a lot of things in the company just besides designing, but I'm, you know, obviously CEO, I do a lot, have other responsibilities, but my passion is, is design and product development. You know, that's what, that's what really drives me and gets me excited. And, um, you know, like kind of, kind of, partly what you mentioned it you could you you have much more flexibility with design so if it's in your head or or you have an idea it's a lot easier to uh develop the product because the key difference is you know with traditional lbt you have cylinders and uh those are mechanical cylinders which uh take time and uh to, to make and also get, you know, there's a process of, you know, getting the cylinders the way you need them. And then you have to do the color. So it could be like, ultimately like a six month process where, you know, digital, you can cut that into a, into a third. Um, so you can get the development a lot quicker. You know, that, you know, some of the downsides are, are the minimum runs are a little longer because you can't, stop it it's a, mach a continuous machine so the printing process you know and get the inks right you have to keep it going but um you know the the the, the part that really excited me and you know i got excited about registered embossed when that first came out and where you actually uh can emboss directly where the graining and the knots are with traditional lvt and spc printing or not a, a rigid printing Right. Um, you could, um, with this, you have a 3D texture. So where mechanical is still to like a trained eye, you can kind of tell it's, um, a replication because there's certain gloss levels, certain texture, uh, with the mechanical, uh, printing, uh, embossing. So with digital, it's very smooth and very subtle and the gloss, you know, the it basically you're replicating as close to the real thing as I've ever seen in my entire career. And, you know, the key to our marketing is, you know, feel the difference, feel the realism, because ultimately that's our biggest advantage is, you know, when you touch and feel the product, when they compare it to other products, it's, it's a no brainer. So it simplifies the, the buying decision. So we, we've, uh, we've worked on tiles. We've, we've got planks, you know, we have, I mean, obviously new products, it's, uh, it's a little more difficult now because obviously with the COVID-19, it's, uh, slowed down the process, but, you know, we're using it as a positive because we're kind of, we, we really fine tune the line in the marketing. So that way it's not rushed. And, you know, when, when, when we launch it, it's going to be nice and tight and ready to go. 
I can't tell you how excited I am. I mean, the idea that this is a 3D printed product and that its basis is going to be these digital files, I can only imagine, and we're gonna find out really soon, how this translates into what your images will look like as they appear on websites, inside mm -hmm. of a visualizer. Um, I got to assume that we're going to basically set a new bar for the type of experience we can create online. Because if we take the file as it is, and it's actually the file that created the floor itself, and turn that into basically the swatch online and into the visualized yeah. floor, I got to think this is going to be really incredible. So. Yeah. Again, I see a lot of what you're doing very differently. I've noticed online, also socially, you've started to really promote yourself um, and your products. And I see these really sharp, contemporary looking room scenes and different things. So is this an initiative that you've taken on recently? Yeah, I would say over the last uh, two months, we've really stepped up our game on uh, social media, um, you know, because we had a meeting when when the pandemic hit and we said, you know, let's, let's focus on what we can do instead of what we can't do. And um, obviously one of the areas that we could, we could do better in is uh, social media. So we, we really upped our game with, um, with the type of posts that we, we have. And, um, you know, we, we actually quadrupled our followers within two months. So we definitely hit a target where, and I find that, you know, I know you're, your whole thing is um, with the internet and, and, and data and everything. And it's interesting because I, I see that, you know, the followers we're getting, we would never get from the traditional uh, retail store because these are more um, designer driven uh, type likes that we're getting and followers. And um, so it's just kind of expanding our, our base and um, it gives us an opportunity to, to kind of, get in front of people that you know maybe we couldn't have before so we're 100 really percent i think that's and the funny th you're doing that at right th at the right time obviously because the entire world just went 100 percent digital um mm -hmm. and you know for floor force we've been preaching this for a very long time that listen if you want to reach a target audience they're all right there there's really there's really your phone and three apps on that phone facebook linkedin and google and you can get in front of every single person you could possibly want to get in front of. And what's really cool is you can segment out those audiences. So mm -hmm. when you understand now what you're understanding is, wait a minute, I'm reaching interior designers. Well, you can make a post that you specifically push into an interior designer audience. You can make a post that you literally push into a pet owner's audience or a new home buyer or an empty nester mm -hmm. who's moving into Miami into a condo. Um, there's, there's ways of segmenting those audiences and putting things in front of them that will resonate. So man, I'm excited that you're, you're now experiencing yeah. that and seeing Still it learning. And, yeah. Listen, <laughs> we're all if learning. I, well, if I could get to 10% of where you are, I, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> listen, open invitation. will help you as much as we possibly can. So Michael, there's a lot of geopolitical things going on, obviously with the pandemic and there's all kinds of implications on, I think the way things are going to be shipped and how they're gonna be perceived moving forward in the marketplace. How are you dealing with all of that? Hmm. Well, you know, through my experience and um, you know, you never know what's lurking in the weeds. So I felt it was important always to have diversified sourcing uh, where we, um, we have our, you know, our products, our designs in um, in multiple uh, locations throughout the world. Um, as you know, we have China, Korea, but the U.S. has been really important. That's something that you know I started uh, developing uh, over three years ago. We were the first uh, domestically produced LVT with the Floor Nation brand, and um, we're about to launch, which is just coming off the production line, a uh, rigid click. So we'll actually have a USA option for a rigid click. Wow. And yeah, so with our with our uh, patterns, again, these are our copyrighted patterns and not open pattern. We have uh, probably over 60 SKUs that are available to be made in the USA. Again, they're in different formats, but the uh, the uh, three constructions that we probably sell the most 
out of the USA plant is a, is a three millimeter glue down with a 20 mil wear layer. And then you've got a five millimeter and a four millimeter, which has uh, been a really nice commercial product because you could um, butt that up against carpet tile. We were actually one of the first to launch that type of product in 2011. And now we have production here in the USA with that structure. And the third would be the clay. So um, we feel having, you know, different products produced um, in the USA is uh, really important because um, now we've got a, you know, pretty, pretty strong uh, political statements out there. You've got the, the coronavirus. So, you know, we're, we're finding that actually people want the USA for, for different reasons. They want it for stability and pricing because, you know, the tariffs that it's still on LVT and it may be imposed again this summer on click. Uh, secondly, you've got ports that, you know, there could be delays at the ports if there's a strike or something like that. And, uh, you know, so, and then you've got, uh, so you have a consistent pricing structure with the U S and, um, there's customers out there that are willing to pay more because of what's going on in the world. So, you know, our job is not to, to fix the world problems. Our job is to to, to give people options and to, um, you know, uh, support our customers so they could be successful and profitable and keep people it working. <laughs> it sounds like you were thinking ahead because there's a lot of people that were not prepared for what has happened. Most people are never prepared for something like that. I don't think anyone was prepared for this right. uh, per se, but I would say having the ability to shift back and forth between other countries in the U.S., and having that foresight, especially right now, is going to come in um, incredibly useful during this time. I have been talking to a lot of suppliers who have no idea how they're going to get product over here right now. So it sounds like um, you're positioned extremely well. Thank you. Michael, as always, it was great talking to you today. Hey, listen, I've got 30 seconds left. Tell me what you're most excited about in the future of Raskin Industries. Well, thank you. Um, well, I'm really excited about our brand. Um, I just feel that, you know, through through this pandemic, we've been really able to to kind of hone in, curate our products, get them get them where they're you know, fashion forward. But you know, part of what I believe could that could sell because you know I'm all about fashion. I live it, dream it. And um, I really feel like, you know, we have the coolest, hippest brand out there and that's highly identifiable. So if people are looking to kind of break the mold, we're the company to do it with. And um, I really hope that, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to us working together because, you know, my big thing is, you know, we were always the best kept secret. I don't want that anymore. I think this, you know, through the internet and through what you're doing, it's a game changer for us because, um, you know, we're, we can compete with anybody right now and um, we're going to do it in, the, in, in our way, which is unique and, um, you know, some, some, a brand that people can, that can relate to. And, um, you know, I'm really proud of that. Michael, I'm really excited also. You bring it. You don't just talk it, as you said, you bring it. And everything that you do has a style, sophistication, and a, an actual kind of loudness about it that gets people's attention with the Gorilla, with the colors. But then when you look at the product itself, you can see exactly how those two things connect. So as we roll out some of these new experiences that we've been working on, it's going to be really, really fun. Michael, stay safe. Thanks again for the time. You too. And uh, I'll see you soon. Thanks for, thanks for the time. Appreciate it.